All right. Uh, good afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time of the day it is for all the attendees of the DEF CON CZ. Uh, my name is Petr Miller, and uh, together with my colleague Honkai, I would like to give you an overview of the, of the challenges that we needed to solve when the OpenShift CI, the, the system that we are developing and operating, grew enough for it. So, so we needed to adopt a multi-cluster topology instead of running everything on a single cluster. So to give you a very brief overview of where are we coming from, we both are members of the test platform team of the OpenShift engineering. And uh, we develop, maintain, operate, support OpenShift CI, which is the continuous integration system that allows uh, both developers of OpenShift itself and developers of uh, software that is supposed to run on top of OpenShift uh, the, so OpenShift CI provides feedback testing of their software. So it's it's uh, you can think of it as a as a some kind of like Travis CI, but Travis CI that automatically installs an OpenShift cluster for you and allow, allows you to deploy uh, your software on top of it and execute any kind of like serious end-to-end -end tests, for example. So. Um, so that's that's what's of that's what most of our uh, the workloads are looking like. Uh, OpenShift CI itself is a is a fairly large instance of the Prow uh, continuous integration system. Uh, Prow is the upstream Kubernetes uh, CI system that we also take part of uh, developing in the upstream, and we operate it on on a fleet of OpenShift clusters. And I will I will get to. Uh, explaining more about the topology a little bit later. Size-wise, uh, we are right now in, in, in peak times, our clusters in the fleet have something around 200 nodes, and we support, uh, we support uh, more than 800 repositories across more than 60 organizations in GitHub. Uh, per week, we run something, something over uh, 100 uh, thousands of jobs and 200, and we built more than 200 images per week. So speaking about topology, so I will just give you a very brief in, in overview of what do we what do we have. So uh, at the moment we have a sort of a control plane, central control plane cluster. We call it FCI, that serves as a kind of uh, like the, the main central cluster that co coordinates everything else. So until some time, uh, this kind of central cluster was all we had. Like we were running everything uh, that we had on on top of a single cluster. But we eventually scaled enough for us, uh, for, so so that we needed to adopt uh, multiple clus not multiple clusters. And we we did it by introducing a concept of so-called built farm clusters. Uh, right now we have we have many uh, uh, the 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 uh, the, the image shows uh, just three of them. So how the how how do we distribute our workload, uh, workload among clusters? Uh, Prow itself, like when, when when there is a job to be executed, uh, it is represented as a Prow job for res resource on top of the uh, control plane cluster FCI. And when that gets executed. Uh, it's realized in Prow submitting a pod on one of the build farm clusters. Uh, pretty much all of the pods are executing a tool called CI operator, which is the tool, our, our test orchestrator uh, binary that knows how to build and test, uh, uh, build and test OpenShift. CI operator works in a way that it creates a temporary namespace uh, to submit the actual testing workloads on. And like mo in in most cases, the test workloads do something like set up and set set up, and which is which means install an ephemeral OpenShift cluster, run some tests against it, where where, te where tests can be either test the cluster itself or test can be install something on top of the on top of, of the ephemeral cluster and test that on top thing, and then tear the ephemeral cluster down. To support everything uh, in the in this area, we need to uh, we we need a bunch of uh, auxiliary to, uh, auxiliary tooling 
that make sure that everything uh, everything needed by the jobs themselves are is present. We distribute things. That we make sure the build farm cluster contain all the all the deployments, all the services we need, etc. So I'll just walk briefly through the challenges that we will be speaking about today. So one of the one of our major challenges is how to make sure uh, that each of the build farm clusters is uh, containing everything the all the CI jobs need to actually execute. So, so for for example, to install an OpenShift cluster, you need uh, a bunch of images you need uh, that constitute OpenShift itself. You need a really payload image that represents a version of OpenShift to test. You need a bunch of secrets that allows the job to talk, for example, to to AWS or GCP or other cloud platform. Etc. So we need to make sure that everything needed is there. We need to deal with uh, managing the fleet of build farm clusters. So we want to add them. Uh, we need to make sure that every every system knows about, for example, a new cluster in the in the system, etc. Uh, we need to deal with a category of problems that, like, we now need to do decisions about what which jobs should run on what build farm. Uh, there's a class of uh, problems associated with that. Uh, running multiple clusters with different role in the system also is more in, uh, more uh, more difficult to monitor, more difficult to maintain. Uh, it changed our it, it changed the way how we uh, handle incidents, etc. Et uh, lastly, we would like to speak a little bit about what is what is still missing right now, uh, which constitutes mostly like like a, a future work that that waits for us. So I will just I will start talking about the first class of uh, issues uh, uh, challenges that we have, which is making sure that uh, every, all content needed is actually present on the clusters. So if I start with uh, making sure the making sure that uh, the clusters themselves have all the deployments that they all have all the configuration, all the services deployed, uh, we use GitOps methodology for that. And we wrote a tool that's called apply config, which is basically a glorified OC apply variant, which the tool iterates over a Kubernetes manifest stores, uh, stored in a direct stru directory structure that somehow represents the individual uh, clusters in our system based on their role. And uh, <coughs> Applies them to the cluster, basically, basically doing something like OC apply. Uh, one big part of that is uh, our big use case is making sure that the manifests are actually valid before we try to apply them at the cluster. So the uh, apply config has a has a mode that we run in a pre submit job. Pre submits are jobs that are executed against the pull requests before they are merged. And apply config has a dry run mode that, that that does extensive validation of the candidate manifests before they merge them. So, so a big big thing for us was having a single tool that both validates and eventually applies the manifests on the clusters. A second big category of the content that we need to make available on on CI clusters is uh, images. We we deal a lot of we deal a lot with uh, images. So we have a something like a central registry that's an uh, internal registry on the on the app CI cluster and that's the canonical like current state of the art bleeding edge uh, set of images that should be used by all the all the individual CI jobs. We build a controller called just images distributor that distributes the uh, this the the versions of the images from the center cluster to all the internal registries uh, on the build farms so that the CI jobs that end up running on the build farm can only use the cluster internal uh, cluster internal registry of the uh, of the appropriate build farm cluster. Uh, the loop is uh, closed by if, if we if we if you if we merge some code and the code is gets successfully tested, we build new versions uh, new versions of the images. We build them on the build farms, and they get uh, promoted, so called promoted, uh, 
back to the central registry on the FCI cluster and disclose the loops. And by this process, the images are made available for other uh, for other CI jobs to consume in a continuous integration fashion. A last big part of uh, of what constitutes a content to be uh, to be made available for CI jobs to consumes is secrets. Uh, we our users who are setting up CI jobs for the repositories, they often need to provide us custom secrets. No, not us, but they provide their CI jobs custom secrets. For example, keys to specific accounts on cloud platforms uh, and other kinds of secrets that only their CI, job, CI jobs need. So in order to provide self-service for them, we built a uh, we build a solution based on HashiCorp Vault, uh, where they can uh, where, where they can manage their secrets without us needing to support them. And we built uh, another controller called CI Secret Bootstrap, that uh, whose job is to distribute the secrets uh, to the individual build farms, so that they can be actually consumed by the CI jobs on the uh, running on the on these build farms. So that was part of the that was part of the talk that con that talked about uh, making content available uh, on on build farm clusters, and the rest of the talk would be delivered by Honkai, my colleague, who I now give uh, word to. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Honkai from OpenShift Test Platform team. Uh, from this part, we will illustrate how to achieve. Uh, the goal that uh, making a cluster, OpenShift cluster, as a build farm cluster. Uh, next slide, please. Pro is the uh, core part of the OpenShift CI, and it has, it has uh, various uh, components such as DAG and Hook. There are other tools uh, for GitHub, uh, for GitOps and managing secrets and images, as we introduced before. Uh, to uh, become a CI view farm cluster, uh, these parts in CI have to recognize the new cluster. Uh, all we need to do to do is uh, to add cube configs to the right secrets. For example, uh, hook is the pro component which gets involved uh, when some GitHub events takes place. Suppose we have a new cluster called build03. Uh, we need to create a service account hook on the cluster, generate its uh, cube config, and save it in Vault. Our tool, CI Secret Bootstrap, will receive, uh, receive it from Vault and use it to create secret hook in the CI namespace on the APP CI cluster. The secret has the uh, cube configs for hook on all clusters. They are mounted to the file system so that the hook instance can load and use them. The component hook recognizes the new cluster build03 after the secret has the build 03 cube config. We do this to other pro components and other CI tools. And then the cluster is part of our uh, CI system. This cluster is the CI build farm cluster. Next slide, please. And once a cluster becomes a CI build farm cluster, we can run jobs and pro jobs pods on that cluster. The goal of uh, job, job dispatching is to distribute workload evenly among the clusters, which is achieved by two CI automations. One is called dispatcher, the other is uh, called Sanitizer, a configuration file describes where a job should run. Job names and uh, file names are used in a configuration file. The configuration file is the output of a dispatcher. It use, uses some heuristics to keep workload even. We cannot simply uh, randomly assign jobs and uh, files because the job have different frequency of occurrence. Sanitizer, uh, sanitizer reads the, the configuration file and generate the cluster field in each job definition accordingly. Eventually, 
Prog creates the path for its job on the cluster according to that field. This configuration file is also used to handle failover if some cluster is down. Next time, please. So from this slide, we will talk about the routine operations that our team does on those clusters. Next. The clusters in the CI system are dog footed with the candidate versions for the coming release. We might hit some issues with these uh, pre release versions. That is the reason that build 01 upgrade always goes first, and we have build 02 always upgrade manually, which is the cluster for failover. After the version has been stable on build 01, we upgrade build 02 to that version. A cron job keeps build 01 up to date on these stream versions. If uh, it is a wide stream upgrade, it is manual. Uh, there is usually someone from our team who watches wide stream upgrades. The soaking time for build 01 is one week uh, for wide stream upgrade and is one day for this stream up upgrade. Failover is simple with the configuration file that determines where job run in the last slide. We have started to use OSD clusters for our build farms recently for the simplicity of cluster provisioning and expert support from the OSD team. The version for those uh, OSD clusters are kept up to date automatically after all build farm clusters are successfully upgraded, we, up, we start to upgrade APP CI. Next slide, please. A monitoring uh, multi-cluster system is definitely challenging for our team. Uh, we need a central place for notifications and alerts to converge for this purpose. We deploy a monitoring stack for Prowl. It has its own instance of uh, Prowl method and alert manager. The, al uh, the alert manager is integrated with PagerDuty and Slack. Someone from our team will be notified if uh, a service is down or a critical job failed or some build farm cluster is down. If uh, a cluster cannot be fixed in a reasonable time, we will migrate the jobs away from that broken cluster. This can be achieved by simply creating a pull request that modifies the configuration file for dispatcher and uh, sanitizer. All the efforts we made on Pro and other tools to support multi-cluster multi are paid off in this scenario. Any single build farm cluster is less, ident uh, less critical. Moreover, isolating the workload of CI jobs from PRO makes APP CI more stable. Less CI downtime makes our CI, uh, our users of CI system, the OpenShift developers, more productive. Next slide, please. Today, OpenShift, uh, OpenShift cluster can be easily created and destroyed, like a resource is in the cloud. We want to catch that up, and we have done some work in this direction. Joining a new cluster to CI build farm can be easily done by uh, several hours of work. There are more steps we, we can, we want to automate. Our dream is one day that uh, we can have an auto scaler for our CI build farms. A cluster joins in and retires from CI system as needed. We, uh, we are certainly not there yet. Pro is uh, running on FCI, which is still a single point of failure in our system. OpenShift CI would face outage if uh, APP CI is down. Fortunately, APP CI is a, a OSD cluster which is managed by Red Hat OSD team. Their support is quick, quick and good. Another 
uh, potential bottleneck comes from test images distributor, the tool uh, that distributes image from APPCI to other build farm cluster. Uh, it watches every images, uh, image streams on every cluster so that it can keep every image up to, up to date. As we have more and more clusters in the CI system, it consumes more and more resources. We might need some powerful and dedicated nodes to host a deployment in the future. Next slide, please. So this uh, concludes our presentation. So uh, feedback and questions are welcome.